David Brewster here with another three for all, and this is three Randy Rhodes licks from 1979. And I did feature Randy in a three for all and chord play last year. And earlier this year, we had the classical side of Randy Rhodes, where we looked at some of his nylon string and acoustic, you know, classically influenced guitar parts. And here we are diving, you know, a little deeper into some of his licks. And it's really interesting because Randy grew up, you know, in Santa Monica. And just over a half hour away, Eddie Van Halen grew up in Pasadena. So they lived and grew up, you know, they went to different high schools, but they lived about a half hour or 40 minutes away from each other, which is really interesting. So Quiet Riot, you know, which Randy, you know, was a founding member, and I think he played uh, with Quiet Riot from 1973 to 1979, you know, before he joined Ozzy's band. And it's interesting because Quiet Riot played a lot of the same clubs and venues that Van Halen did in the early days. And they even came together in 1977 and Quiet Riot opened for Van Halen. I think that was in Glendale. And that's kind of closer to Eddie's, you know, home base. But uh, it's really interesting. So they knew each other and their paths crossed, you know, several times. And there's this rivalry, you know, between Eddie Van Halen and Van Halen fans and Randy Rhodes and Randy Rhodes fans. And, you know, I'm a fan of both. You know, I love Eddie Van Halen, but I also love Randy Rhodes too. Not trying to stir up some arguments or confrontations, you know, in the comment section here. I'm just throwing out like actual facts and history. But it does remind me this Randy and Eddie kind of war or battle. It kind of reminds me of other times, you know, in music history where you'll find these competitive you know, musicians kind of pushing each other or almost fighting each other. You know, think of Roy Buchanan and Danny Gatton. That's kind of a, you know, a parallel to the Randy and Eddie, you know, situation. You know, Danny and Roy uh, definitely had very similar styles. They both played tellies, they played a lot of the same clubs, and they knew each other, but they weren't really buddies. You know, they were kind of almost competing over some of the same turf and some of the same fans and everything else, almost like Eddie and Randy, which is really interesting. And as far as Quiet Riot's concerned, you know, Randy was a founding member and played with them from 1973 to 1979. And they did have two albums that were released only in Japan, Quiet Riot and Quiet Riot 2. And then I think in the late 80s or early 90s, they had the Quiet Riot Years, you know, which had some live uh, footage and, you know, recordings or whatever with Randy. And it's really interesting because, you know, Randy was growing and about to explode about the same time that Eddie Van Halen was. And that kind of goes back to what I was talking about earlier where they lived kind of close together. They were, you know, doing some things. I mean, obviously their styles are very different, but they were growing and pushing, you know, the electric guitar forward in their own ways. And it's just really interesting to notice all that activity about a half hour away from each other, you know, really cool. And in the 90s, um, I actually played with the band and we opened for Quiet Riot. I don't know if you can see any of those signatures there, but I was completely honored and I met Kevin and Carlos and Frankie and uh, Chuck Wright was on bass back then. So that was really cool, you know, opening for them and meeting them. And definitely, uh, you know, Kevin's passed away now, which is really sad. But I was honored. I thought, wow, you know, in a roundabout way, I'm opening for somebody that worked with Randy Rhodes. And that just blew my mind. Licks in this lesson came from a bootleg from 1979, and I think Quiet Riot was playing at the Whiskey. I could be wrong about the venue. I think I did see one from the Troubadour, too. So there were multiple, you know, early bootlegs of Quiet Riot with Randy Rhodes. There's actually more Quiet Riot footage with Randy than there is Ozzy footage with Randy. And I know Ozzy's kind of sitting on a stash of whatever he has. But it is, you know, really interesting if you're on YouTube, there's a bunch of early, you know, Randy Rhodes and then just a little bit uh, of Randy with Ozzy. The first looks really unusual. I really dig this idea. And the first part, he's just playing this melodic uh, pattern or this melodic line in E minor. And then he follows it and he's actually doing these plucked or picked harmonics. And it mimics what you see classical guitarists do as far as plucked you know, as far as plucked harmonics like that, and they usually use their fingers, you know, in classical guitar. But Randy's actually doing with his pick. And when I saw this lick, I was like, whoa, that is really crafty. Something like this. One more time. So it's kind of split in half. In the first half, you're basically doing this. Just kind of, you know, 
wide uh, intervallic phrase. <laughs> Put that little trill in there. And then this is where the fun begins. So we're basically playing this. But we're not doing it like that. You know, we're not picking and fretting it normal. Uh, we're doing it, you know, a different way. So that's the melody. But what Randy's doing, he's actually, like I said a minute ago, he's mimicking, you know, classical guitarists when they pluck harmonics, you know, and they usually use their fingers. Like that. And you're literally, you know, uh, hovering over the fret that you're going to, you know, basically make the ping or the harmonic. And then your pinky or your third finger can come into play and literally plucks the string while you're hovering over that fret and it creates that harmonic. Kind of messed up right there, but yeah, that's the basic idea. But he's doing it with the pick, like this. So he's literally picking. Uh, you know, the, the pick is actually to the right side of his thumb, and then just like the fleshy side of his thumb right there is grazing where the harmonic lives. So that. <laughs> Know, very unusual and it's going to take you a little bit of time to kind of figure out where that harmonic jumps out because I kind of messed it up right there. Something like that. It's such an unusual you know technique and it sounds really cool it just caught me off guard like whoa that's cool like this. <laughs> Yeah, the next idea is this rolling arpeggio idea. It definitely, definitely has a classical influence. And I played around with it, and you could definitely play it as a lick. Um, but I kind of use it like an exercise or a warm-up, and I change strings and positions, and you can play around with the basic idea. But it's something like this. <laughs> starting with this E major arpeggio. You know, there's your E, G sharp, and B. Just play that four times in a row. And then you have B major, and you're going to do that twice. And then you have two double stops. You know, there's basically, you know, just two parts of B major. You know, we're basically playing F sharp and B, and then B and D sharp up here. Like that. basically do D major right here, just mirror the exact same thing, but down a whole step. And then A major right here. And then just do those two A major double stops. And then C major down here, do it again. And then just basically stay on G and do that four times. And then just end on a B power chord right there, B5. Next lick is actually a pretty famous, you know, Randy Rhodes lick, and this appears on his live, you know, tribute guitar solo when he was with Ozzy. So once again, these parallels between Randy and Eddie's universe, you know, it's really interesting that early on, you know, Eddie Van Halen was developing this live guitar solo that included Eruption and later, you know, Spanish Fly and Cathedral and Mean Street and all these things. But his early solos back in the late 70s, early 80s, was kind of the foundation of his giant, you know, guitar solos that he continued to do throughout the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, and beyond. And Randy, even though his life and his career was a lot shorter than Eddie's, he was doing the same thing, because during this footage from 79, you can catch licks that he did with Ozzy, you know, during his live solos with Osborne. 
So this lick, um, it's pretty famous, and I've caught, you know, Kirk Hammett, a whole bunch of guitarists, you know, kind of ripping this lick off, or borrowing this lick, I guess I should say. But it's something like this. <laughs> Right there you can see we're just basically doing pull-offs and uh, you know one more time with the lick and I think he continues with tapping but the lick itself uh, you know it's starting on the high E string and we're basically flirting with a harmonic minor And then the same thing on the B string, but now it's E harmonic minor. But we're using, you know, pull-offs in the open strings like this. And then do the exact same thing on the B string. Pick up the pace, and it's a great workout for your pinky for sure, like this. Here's a bonus lick from this footage, and this is kind of an early, you know, mutant form of the Randy Rhodes lick, you know, the phrase that he made famous with Ozzy Osbourne on songs like Crazy Train and tons of other songs. And it's frantic and busy and kind of a finger twister, but it's something like this. <laughs> down so you can see the pattern there is a pattern you know and kind of this melodic push that's kind of pushing all the way through that lick and uh, Randy did that kind of thing all the time where he would start a phrase and then he would you know kind of space out the you know either the sequence or whatever you know kind of pattern he was playing but he would time it perfectly for that last note to hit you know like on a downbeat or a strong beat and you know something like this <laughs> So there's the first part of it, and he's doing that signature kind of pull-off in there, too. Like that. When you get to that C note, then you're going to basically come to this, and there you've got D, C, and B. Grab that A, and then F sharp, D, F sharp, hammer on pull-off, and then E to D. So before we change positions, you know, that part of it right there, really slow. And then right there, you're going to shift to a lower position of, uh, you know, it's basically E minor, or A minor. And we've got... Uh, it's a very odd phrase when you play it slow. But then when you hear how it kind of flows, you know, in a, in a little faster tempo, you can kind of, you know, tap your foot or kind of lock onto it. Um, something like this. But that's a tough lick, you know, it's tricky, it's a finger twister, and you're kind of working the notes around in kind of an unusual way and fluttering between notes, which is kind of, you know, some of Randy Rhodes' kind of signature moves. And then shifting out of position, too, and ending, you know, on that final note. On the downbeat so that's a tough you know tough phrase but once again you know something like this It's going to wrap this look at three Randy Rose looks from 1979, and definitely, you know, Randy Rose is a huge influence on just about everybody I know that plays guitar. And, you know, the classical side of things definitely influenced me to pursue classical guitar, you know, back when I was still in high school. And that made me interested. I thought, hey, I want to study classical guitar too and learn how to read music and, you know, work on Bach and some of these, you know, Carcassi and Soar and some of these composers. 
and I loved it. And that was directly an influence from Randy Rhodes. And also there was, you know, kind of a an Ingve thing that kind of, you know, chimed that too. But between Ingve and Randy, it piqued my interest in studying classical music and guitar. And, you know, obviously Eddie kind of helped me discover the guitar, you know, and influenced me to start playing. So both these, you know, uh, players, whether it's, you know, Eddie or Randy, influenced me greatly. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are on the Randy side or they're on the Eddie side and they have drawn this line between the two, you know, and it's like, whoa, this isn't like a feud or something. It's music, you know, it's a guitar. So I don't really do that. I don't really throw things on the other side of the fence. It's like, no, I'm, I'm kind of right on the fence where it's like, you know what? I love Eddie and I love Randy too. So let's just get along and, and jam or whatever, which is probably what they're doing right now. You know, wherever they are, I hope they are jamming and kind of make peace and maybe trading licks or whatever they're doing. But, you know, legends of guitar and definitely Randy Rhodes changed, you know, changed the game just like Van Halen did. So anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.